Oh, hello all, it's Paul again. Just doing a daily video. Update on one of my personal projects, the, um, the Heathcote Amplifier project, the SB200 restoration. Okay, so where are we up to? I'm just going to give you a summary today of where we're at with this lovely little amplifier. Okay, that gives you a, a bit of a walk around of the radio. Um, the rear deck, that's yet to be worked on. Uh, there's a few little things that need to be done. However, as you can see on the bottom panel, I've replaced both antenna connectors. I've replaced the power connector. I'm leaving the keying and ALC controls the, the way they are. Um, and I will shorten the earthing connector and put a different securing knob on that. Okay. So there's been quite a bit of work carried out so far. Um, it's all just part-time on this. Uh, because of COVID, as everybody knows, it's very hard to get parts. And a lot of traditional part suppliers like Harbark are refusing to sell to the rest of the world. So that's my little rant for the moment. Not very happy at that one, um, considering um, you know, a desire that I really want to use their parts, but uh, cancelling orders because you live in a different country and then saying that you can't supply when the fact is that you can. It's just that me, the customer, has to pay a little bit more money for the postage. All right, so what have we done? Um, over the last couple of days, we've installed the hairpin matching system on the uh, parasitic suppressors, uh, sourced that from Tito in France. I've used these before. They work quite well. Never had any uh, degradation to the power output um, above 15 metres, like a lot of hams are saying you do have. I haven't been getting the... Um, uh, para I haven't been getting parasitic oscillations at VHF or UHF. I've had amps tested. So um, if this doesn't work, I'll just revert to the last, um, the original OEM um, product. But so far, that's my handiwork. Uh, new, new, new match pair of uh, uh, Taylor 572s with the hairpins. I've added ceramic anode caps. Spend a bit of time on getting the the detail right on the installation, so it's not just a slap and go. Um, to give you some idea, here's one of the anode caps I've purchased. Um, so that's all uh, ceramic. Uh, the leg goes in there. Here's an old one. Just goes in the hole like that. And you then push the uh, lugs down and solder. Um, and you need to solder fairly strong. I didn't solder with silver, which I normally do on the parasitic um, uh, suppression of uh, uh, leads. But it's all good. All right, so that's 14 millimeter. There's various different sizes that fit the, the uh, 572Bs. Very cheap, um, but... They finish off the look, and because of their clamping, they actually support the tubes uh, horizontally quite well. And with all of the strength that I've added here, they don't move. Where with the other method, they did move around a bit under heat, just a tiny bit. All right, uh, what else? The, what else um, have I done? Well, in the last video, we talked about the um, W7RY. Uh, um, uh, soft start board that's in it works well um, very similar in looks to the Harbach board but operates slightly differently it's connected up differently um, and in mine I've gone for the point of lugs non-solder so that you can remove and you don't need to solder I insulate all the wires keying wires which go to the fan on the left and the right side of the fan to pick up the 110 volts this is a 240 volt amp and 
The main differences are the protection in this soft start. There's two fuses on this where Harbark doesn't have those. Um, and then what I've done is mount the, uh, the cement capacitors underneath and that's, what, that's how it sits on the board. And in the middle, it's got a hole, which I run a plastic board connector through onto the chassis. And that holds it in place. That works well. Um, uh, something else that I'm in the process of, of just um, sorting out, it's one of the last things that will be installed, is a, a glitch resistor. Uh, this is a 10 ohm with a 1 amp fuse in line that goes in the HV side. Um, we have a, I'm not too sure if I'm definitely going to install this board, but I had in stock from uh, the last SB200 that I had a, a spare soft keyboard uh, to reduce the, the keying uh, voltage down from 100 volts down to I think it's a couple of volts or something for modern radios. So that's there to be installed. Uh, what else? Um, I have new discs. There's the two sizes, the small and the large, for one, two, three, four, five, um, to restore those. I uh, had a, an unfortunate event happen when I was working on this the other day. I dropped one, the knobs off the table and dented the skirt on this one. So I'm looking for uh, at least one knob. So if anybody's got one, I would appreciate it. I, and but it needs to, but the skirt needs to be in really good nick, and the plastics. I'm not too fussed about the face because that's getting replaced. Um, and maybe two. All right. Uh, so that's that's done. And what else? Um, oh yes, uh, I've ordered in. I've seen these online. Uh, again, further further uh, fail-safe mechanisms. These are microwave fast-blow fuse fuses, um, and I got them online, and they blow very, very quickly. Uh, yeah, I should have prepared this better and had it ready to show you. Here we go. Let's see if that's that's opened. Just bear with us. So these are, are microwave fuses, and um, I've seen um, I've seen um, on on the internet these are becoming popular go to for um, for amplifiers because of the speed at which they blow. Um, so that's one option that I'm looking at installing. Uh, if I don't put in the glitch protection. Um, so at least I've got that as a resource again because parts are hard to come by I'm buying as much as I can when I can okay so the power supply boards in and working uh, one other thing that I'm seriously considering doing on the meters even though I've got a really bright automotive bulb in here it's not as uh, it's not lighting up the front display radiantly bright it's it's backlighting and looks fantastic but i think it, we can do more so what i'm going to do is with three leds i'm going to create um uh, two holes one there and one there into the plastic and reverse mount uh, a five mil led holder where they push in and i'll mount those and then power them into the same uh, the, the same power source. So we'll see how that goes. If it doesn't work, it's fine. I just cover the holes up. <laughs> so that's that's something that's going on there. Uh, we did a video on the transfers and the sanding of the top cover, the new transfer which I sourced, which is factory size, and then the clear coat of that top panel. All right, so that part's done. The face is done. I'm not. I'm not replacing the face. Done a a, a cut and polish on the meter. Um, cleaned all the cabinets inside and out. Haven't cleaned the back. Uh, sanded and then painted the transformer. I'll show you the underneath. 
All right, so it's, it's looking a lot neater than when I first received the, the amp, which is normal for something that's this age. Um, added these two wires to the switches, which is where you source the um, the power from, from the on and off switch for the soft start board. Um, can you pick it up? No, there's a screw in the middle there that I added. Uh, there's the new power supply board. Removed the three uh, resistors. Only needs one now. Um, I'm toying with the idea of running the soft key in here somewhere. Uh, and I'm looking for a newer relay as well for this. Um, so that I can update that. What else? Uh, I've got to replace these two caps. I'm still looking for suggestions for that. I've replaced the sticker there for the danger. The other one was worn out. Um, I've done a first first clean on the wafer switches, but I'll be running. I'll be using deoxid on that and a brush. Uh, I'm toying with the idea of running a plastic insulator here. So, because the switch is so close to the chassis and the power supply board, <laughs> uh, yeah, that one's that's factory how it is. So, all right, uh, what else? Okay, so that's it for the underneath of the board, and it's really a matter of uh, um, once that's all occurred, we can then start. I can start doing some on-air power tests. Uh, oh yes, the other thing, the other thing, other mod that I did was run a IEC. Oh, let's see if we can get it focused. An IEC computer fitting which is filtered. I got the filtered one and I've run this on a lot of my old school amplifiers. It just um, smoothens out the AC and at 240 volts I don't know about 110 because here in Australia we've we're on 240 but any help we can do to smoothen those ripples out um, from a very much a layman's exp explanation uh, is good for the amplifier um, it's still not final I will actually neaten this up and put heat shrink on these when I get closer to completing the amplifier other things that I've got to do is go over all the old um, Alan Bradley uh, resistors and check for their their um, um, values, and um, then that's it for now.